Hello, welcome back to Quark Talk. I took a little break, had to do stuff out, you know, as one does. So anyway, welcome back. If you've never seen my show before, I'm Crystal, and uh, this is a platform for us to talk about sensitive, provocative, socially important issues that pertain to women and our bodies. So please join us today. We have a very fun and glamorous topic, oh. that of the <laughs> beauty pageant. They're all giggling here. They're like, oh, it's not that glamorous, <laughs> is it? So today, we're going to be talking about beauty pageants and the myths. So Mythbusters, welcome, ladies. You, you see these, if I had like this clap kind of thing, you see. Oh. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> In my head, I have this song because it's a beauty pageant song in Hong Kong and everyone knows it da -da -da, and then everyone kind of does that 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 beauty pageant wave do you guys have a beauty pageant wave is there uh, such a thing <laughs> just to learn how to do it everyone thinks that it's something along the lines yeah. of yeah, yeah, yeah. very graceful <laughs> but truth be told when I see a little kid on the side of the street when like they're watching the parade and I'm in a car I freak out do? and I kind of yeah. just like you go like you're really local you're like ah <laughs> I'm not like trying there. to be yeah. cool. People, people look at me funny because I'm so pale, but I mean, you're <laughs> you look a lot more local than I do. So. Are you three all local? Let's uh, get it off. Uh, well, I was born in New York, but I grew up here. I went to Punahou School, and okay. then I went to uh, UH Manoa. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. You guys all introduce yourselves. Okay. Tell your names, and I'll try to remember your titles because you know. <laughs> okay, so Stephanie, let's start with Stephanie. Okay, so my name is Stephanie Wang, and I was the 2015 Miss Chinatown Hawaii. Um, I was born in New York, and I moved here when I was six years old. So I grew up in Hawaii, attended Punahou School, and then later University of Hawaii at Manoa, where I studied Chinese language and literature. Wow, what are you gonna do with that? Oh, don't you hear this <laughs> question? I, yes. Forget it, I'll pull back. Oh, I no. promised myself we're not gonna do those stupid questions like, oh, where are you gonna be in five years? Hey, forget, <laughs> forget I asked you anything. Okay. okay. <laughs> Unless you wanna tell us. Um, well, right now, I, I really wanna go into writing, so hopefully I can do uh, Chinese writing and wow. English writing. Great, wow. great place for all that multicultural, <laughs> good stuff. Okay, Lindsay? Um, hi, my name is Lindsay. I was your 2015 Miss Hawaii Chinese. I am 22 years old. I went to um, Honolulu High School. I'm from Honolulu, Hawaii, born and raised. And uh, yeah, I'm currently majoring in healthcare administration. I hope to graduate this fall. And Why do you say hope to? Oh, because <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's but, fantastic. Mm -hmm, Great. Yeah. And anything else you want to share that we need to know about you? Um, I'm left-handed. That's a weird <laughs> fact. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Tara Driver. I am your Miss Chinatown Hawaii 2016. I just competed at the Miss Hawaii pageant to represent the Chinese community of Hawaii as well as the Chinatown community. Um, I just graduated from Ilani School and I'll be attending New York University in the fall to study engineering with a focus in construction management and urban planning. Um, I have been born and raised here. Kaimuki local girl wow. so yeah um Hawaii is my home but I'm excited to branch out and learn more about other places and other cultures so that I can bring it back here for everyone to appreciate excellent excellent so I'm so glad you're all so different you all have your own personalities and everything comes across that way but a lot of times pageants tend to pigeonhole girls who join these things and you become just this this walking beautiful body that represents something that becomes a cliche and some people like to criticize, especially feminists who think, what, beauty pageant on you, exploding your body, do you think, you know? So let's just start with how you feel about beauty pageants and whether your experience in it had changed your perception of it or some myths that you really wanna put on the table today and say, it's not like that. Oh, definitely, there's definitely a stereotype when it comes to pageants, you think, uh, beauty pageants are, you know, leggy, leggy, leggy girls with maybe blonde hair or, you know, who only care about their looks, but it's definitely, from my experience, I know that it's completely not like that. I realize that everyone is beautiful in their own way. Uh, beauty comes in all shapes and sizes and colors, and um, it's, it's, it's just, you know, like, I don't, from my experience, I don't feel like I've, I've been self-conscious about the way I look or you don't um, feel judged in a way I mean it is competition but right. I think you're competing more so with yourself and oh that's interesting do you feel you that way before. girls Com competing yeah, with yourself well 
during competition, I would definitely say that it's more competing with yourself than anything, huh. but there is an expectation to always look a certain way and to mm -hmm. wear certain things, um, hold yourself and speak with the right words at the right time. Mm -hmm. And so I think that... Um, so you can't talk like Trump, who says, oh, well, I don't care about that. You know, I don't think trying anyone to, can. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you can't even pull it off very well, so... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, there is, I feel like there are always people watching you and telling you that you should be doing certain things a certain way, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you have to evaluate yourself and see, you know what, am I happy with the image that I'm portraying? Because if that's the authentic me, of which I'm proud, and I want other people to be proud of as well, then that's, that's all you can do. Mm. Okay. Lindsay, do you have anything yeah, to add to that? Yeah, uh, I can definitely uh, agree to both. And um, yeah, I mean, for me, um, you know, beauty pageants was something uh, I looked at as, oh, you have to be very, um, you know, proper and very confident. And when I went into this pageant, I, I had no pageant experience at all. I was very shy. I was a tomboy. And uh, I still am a tomboy a little bit. <laughs> so <laughs> why did you want to do it then? I wanted to do the Miss Chinatown Hawaii pageant specifically because it's always been a dream, a childhood dream of mine to to do that. And uh, yeah, I mean, growing up, I've I, my dad would take me to Chinatown and we'd see like the queens, and I'd be like, wow, I want to be that one day. So yeah, I mean, the opportunity came up as I got older, and I just kind of uh, took the opportunity, and it really helped me to grow and overcome a lot of obstacles in my life right as well. okay so you yeah. brought out the fact that you know you had this aspiration when you were a young little girl and that just kind of reminds me of a lot of young girls here you know when they look at social media when they look at all these fashion magazines they go oh I want to be a model I want to do this and do that do you think there's any danger in that type of uh, uh, you know over kind of um, obsession with how they look because especially young girls they, they get too involved or self-critical and um, what are the dangers of a beauty pageant type of a, you know, focus that may turn their values maybe not as, you know, mm -hmm. balanced as it should be. I think just trying to fit into a mold instead okay. of embracing who you are uh -huh. and just becoming everything that you're not in the process, just losing yourself in general. I think that's very easy. Have you seen people do that or have you confessed to doing that yourselves? Is that um, part of the process to lose yourself? Yeah, I've, I've had that experience before. I've, um, it's very easy to, especially if you look up to people and you're new to an experience, it's, it's really easy to um, tend to listen to everything other people say. So taking right. like getting external affirmations about what you should look like, how you should act, and um, even just like wardrobe um, yeah, choices time, right? and everything. Mm -hmm, yeah. um, everyone has their own opinion yeah. and there's no right or wrong uh, choice. But I think the most important thing to remember if you find yourself uh, forgetting who you are is mm -hmm. to just recenter yourself and to... How do you do that? How do you, <laughs> how do you guys find your, the comfort and the confidence for your own body? Um, Food. Mud. <laughs> <laughs> Climb a tree. I mean, those are all things that I grew up with, and those are my foundations. And I find that the easiest way to do that and to go back to wherever it is, if you find yourself like with a little bit larger of a head than you should, um, <laughs> is to just like go and immerse yourself in nature, a place where no one knows you with or without your full face of makeup on. You know, ah, um, and just nature. go back. Yes, exactly. Go back to your truest, most natural state, and that's when you kind of remind yourself that you're just a human and yeah. you're you know, very. You're small. in the be perfect place for that, right? Hawaii is mm -hmm. just, you know, Absolutely. nature and beauty is all in one, and you guys are reflecting that. So going back again to, like, the actual pageant, pageant process. So are there some things that we should know about that kind of happen behind the scenes that are, you know, of interest to the general public that, like, what, they really do that? Or um, <coughs> butt glue. Oh, 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 <laughs> In real life, you know, we just make That's funny great. faces all the time and Good. laugh and joke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not all just about smiles and proper and yeah. Okay, so please, Stephanie, define what butt glue is. Okay, so during the swimsuit phase, um, in order for the bottom uh, piece to not, uh, you know, look saggy or ride up or you know, okay, be okay, become unshapen, you want it to be nice and flat. Um, so there's you can uh, you can <laughs> you can apply uh, spray-on glue. 
on. Or roll on. Or roll it on. Comes on very <laughs> warm. Like uh -huh. real glue? Regular glue? Yeah, like, um, um there's, uh, there's is Elmer's glue. You're there's talking <laughs> arts and craft glue. Art, music. absolutely. Oh my gosh. Yeah, pick it up at your local it's Ben art. <laughs> it really, it really is art. <laughs> And then you just stick it on, and then you literally stick your swimsuit the way you <laughs> want it so to. So funny. when you're walking, it just stays there. You don't want it to shift while you're walking. Mm, right. And and you all did that? Yes. It's a uh -huh. staple. I mean, anyone who what? goes to the beach knows that bathing suits don't look like the way they yeah. do on stage. <laughs> so there are extra precautions that need to be taken. Yeah, but then what if you have to go to when you go to the bathroom, you put it back on, you have to restick it. Then oh, you have to like the skin re just leaves your your body. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you have raw skin oh. on your body. And Hi. glue. It stays on for days, no matter how hard <laughs> you scrub it. <laughs> oh, right. What I do is I use, I kind of like recycle the glue to hold on my talent costume afterwards, just to make sure that that okay. doesn't go anywhere That's either. Uh, environmental. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> for you. A good tip, if you have evening gown after or some kind of chung song face, yeah. Yeah. Um, you just throw baby powder on. So okay. it doesn't stick to your dress. Ah, yeah, you don't want the clay no with the your Chinese butt dress. After that, then yeah, it's you're okay. fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. You'd have like white all over your spray tan, and that would be good. <laughs> what about your boobs? You have to do something to stick like your um, swimsuit tape, on top, right? Tape. Duct tape. So duct tape. That, well, uh -huh. that double tape, right? That um, double sided one? More no. like duct tape. Duct tape. <laughs> Wait, Seriously, yeah. that's going to rip Wait, I don't know this trick. What is duct tape? So okay, <laughs> so they, uh. S. S. Right, it's like. stuff <laughs> that electricians use. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, know, I know what duct tape is. Oh, and our contractors are. I don't know the trick. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, please, enlighten us. Um, okay, so during pageant, there's like, you know, a lot of people backstage on the side, and you just run out in your bathing suit, and, you know, you hold your. You Oops. hold your boobs up, uh -huh. and they they like just take oh, you. Oh, so they, they squeeze you whatever uh -huh. cleavage you can get and yeah. put it together. Wait, oh. but then how do you not show it? Oh well, bathing suit or chong sam, where um you know the dress is very like it's covered, it's all the so covered. Want, yeah. yeah. Oh. You want, like, so Tara, so obviously you don't need to use it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she she doesn't need it. <laughs> exactly. So you wouldn't know. So just now that we're on the topic of boobs. Um, <laughs> What about the pressures of that? Because a lot of Asian girls are pretty flat chested. And, mm. uh, and you know, there are always dirty old men who are out there to check out your bodies because you are. You're presenting yourself on stage, especially with the beauty, the, the bathing suit aspect of the contest. So, how do you mm. feel about that? Do you feel, you know, has that changed your kind of perception of what, what's perfect size or what you need to do to show or not show it? Are there pressures like that? I think like now it's swimsuit phase is not really about, you know, have, becoming the perfect size. I think it's really just in, Embracing your body and everything that you are. So if you have like bigger hips, like you know, girls are girls are showing that off. Oh you know, good. instead of hiding it or trying to, you know, uh, slim down in the waist or the hips or the thighs. Um, that must be an American thing, though, right? Because like the pageants in Hong Kong or China, mm -hmm. everyone wants to be stick thin, mm -hmm. and they don't want to be proud of the extra, you know, gifts. <laughs> I, think just, I think it just depends from culture to culture because everyone has such different standards and definitions of beauty and um, the ones in Hong Kong are very different from the ones that we have in Hawaii and even our standards here are so different from those of like Texas, New York, California. So I think that, I mean, for Hawaii specifically, people are very comfortable being natural. Like yes. our definition of beauty is showing up in a mm -hmm. bathing suit, like beach clothes with maybe mascara on, <laughs> if that. But I mean, if you show yourself like that, then it's perfectly acceptable. Whereas I have friends in Texas who say that they never go out with their hair done. Okay. With, without their hair without done. Without their hair yes. done. Yes, yes. Okay. And so I think that, I mean, like for Hawaii in particular, we have so many different influences from all over the world. So we're a lot more comfortable helping women to express whoever their identities are as opposed to conforming to the stick thin standard or the curvy or the six pack of abs, you know? Like right. it's just, wow. there are so many different. I'm so options. glad. I'm so happy. You guys are so healthy in the, in the, the best way. We're going to take a quick break and uh, come back and uh, continue talking. We're going to get, yeah, we learned about butt cream and, and duct tape. So when we come back, I'm gonna, we'll find out a little bit more. Okay, don't go away. Aloha, I'm Chantal Seville, the host of the Savvy Chick Show, which you can watch every Wednesday at 11 a.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. On the Savvy Chick Show, we are all about inspiring and empowering women and girls to be the best they can be by having amazing guests from all around the world. So we hope you'll join us every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Aloha! 
Hey everybody, my name is David Chang and I am a new host for the show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you how to get the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests in the military, business, political, nonprofit world. So no matter what background you're from, we have something for you. Please join us every other Thursday at 10 a.m. at thinktechhawaii.com or on theartofthinkingsmart.com. I look forward to seeing you. For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We're giving you the best tips and with our best health coach here. So, Viva Health Coach. Viva la comida saludable. This is Steve Katz. I'm a marriage and family therapist, and I do shrink wrap, which is now going to every other week, all during the summer and maybe forever after. Take care of your mental health this summer. Have a good time. Do what's fun and take good care of yourself. Bye-bye. Welcome back to Quok Talk. Again, we have here beauty queens, and I hate that because it just puts a title on you and you don't see them. But if you listen to these girls talk, you know these are not just beauty queens. I mean, gee. Stephanie, <laughs> Lindsay, and Tara back here. Um, so we were talking about some fun things um, behind the scenes. You know, my, when I was driving my daughter to her class this morning, she's 13, and she asked, um, so what do they do if they, you know, get a pimple on, on, on the day of it? Or how long does it take for you to get, you know, your hair made up? What are, you know, I'm sure there's some issues with, like, stress-related. Or what if you get your period during that day? Are there, like, stories oh. like that that we uh. should, like, nobody talks about? Uh. <laughs> um, I mean, for pimples, you kind of just have to anticipate it because it's such a high-stress period right. of time. And, I mean... As idealistic as it would be, yeah, we all have pimples when we go on stage. <laughs> oh, okay, so it's part of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then during pageant week, too, you spend so much time with other women that it's almost inevitable that someone's going to have their period, which means that everyone's going to have their period. <laughs> 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 it's contagious. Yeah. Yeah. Don't breathe on me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away. Yeah. Are there, were there some uh, experiences that were kind of not so favorable that you care to share? Are there some um, horrible things with the different girls, you know, the bitchiness and all that stuff? Mm, I haven't had that experience so really? far. I've been fortunate. Because Hawaii is so nice, nobody does anything bitchy, you right? You know what, though? I have a friend, I just, well, I competed in Miss Hawaii this past year, and one of the contestants is from California, and she just moved to, um, to Hawaii to study, but she had completed, competed in the Miss California pageant. And she said that like there were girls there who slashed dresses. They would like oh, ruin them with oil or whatever there was backstage. And that's just that's normal culture. So Oh normal culture. Right. Is it? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's it's so strange. And so she was so like happy to be in a state like Hawaii where everyone is so supportive of each other because like I've never been in a pageant where there was mm -hmm. tension or drama between the girls. But mm -hmm. I didn't realize that, that was something exclusive. Hmm to uh, that was like a part of a the, pro exclusive to Hawaii right right well you are blessed with the niceness of the island um, Lindsay you were voted Miss Congeniality in the Miss UA SA uh -huh. Chinatown pageant correct yeah. now what does that mean you know I after the movie you, people associate <laughs> with uh, you know, oh Sandra Bullock goodness. but why do you think they have this particular award? Do you think it's because the, uh, there's an assumption that most girls are g bitchy and snobby and that they need to, you know, highlight the fact that there is actually somebody nice? What, what, um, what is that all about? No, I think it's just an award that, uh, you know, just um, highlights the girl that, that loves everyone and cares <laughs> about everybody and, you know, isn't afraid to, to be her true self around the other girls, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I, I was it was a privilege being voted amongst my the other girls, um, especially meeting them only two weeks prior, and yeah, it was a lot of fun, and uh, yeah. Okay, being, great. Yeah. You know, I confess that I was uh, part of Miss Chinatown years and years ago <gasps> before oh. you guys were born, but I will I'll, I remember one thing that I'll take away from it is before the pageant, everyone was so fun and friendly and everyone was so good to each other. And then the day after, after the titles were given and the fact that I won, people immediately turned. Like the girls who were my biggest best buddy, like the night before, all of a sudden just gave me the cold shoulder. Oh and goodness. it was just like a real hit of reality, like what people do when, depending on where you are. How do you feel about that? Do you see people <coughs> treating you different or? Um, well, the beginning of a pageant experience is a lot different 
from you know the last week of the pageant when mm -hmm. it suddenly hits you that it's coming up and I do see a change like, there's a shift in um, seriousness I guess some girls like to I mean everyone has to focus their energy like different ways right right so for me I like to I like to like sometimes I like to be alone and sometimes I like to just like you know re re replenish my my good energy because yes. you know from all the stress it's so yes. stressful yeah and um, I mean some girls do the same thing. So you see some girls kind of um, excluding themselves at the end, you oh, know, okay. just to focus their energy because yeah, yeah. it is a competition. And I mean, although I love all the girls and we, <laughs> it's a sisterhood. That's so right. I saw we, from the pictures, it really feels like you guys have a nice bonding with your experience. Right. Okay. So it's a sisterhood. And um, even though things change at the end, everyone knows that I mean, we, we're, we're all in this together. It's an experience. It's, it's not just um, a bunch of girls get thrown into a room and it's like, okay, compete. It's um, it's a whole, it's like months leading up and you get mm -hmm. to know each other very well. Um, you, you create friendships. I mean, we've been friends for like more than two, like two years, years now. now. Mm -hmm. Would you say it's a good platform, kind of like a metaphor of life, you know, your social skills and competition and challenges you have to face? Would you say that's a big experience that's what you take away from it? I think it makes you grow up really quickly I mean I was one of the youngest contestants this past year um, at 17 years old when wow. I stepped on the stage and so at that point you have to be able to advocate for your personal platform you have to be able to hold yourself full in front of an audience you have to be able to, to conduct a ten and a half minute interview with the judges. Was it that long? Wow. Yeah, yeah and wow. I loved every second of it okay, because good. of all of the preparation that you put into it you know you get out what you put in but it definitely does make you learn a specific specific skill set that is applicable to a lot more than pageantry. Like all of my college interviews were so much fun because wow. like a one on one interview is nothing in comparison to having seven people right. firing oh, questions at you <laughs> rapid fire, you know? Yeah. What were some questions you guys didn't like or just dreaded? <gasps> Look at that picture of you so cute with oh. <laughs> that. Was that, um, for? that was for the celebrities on their pets fashion show as a part of the annual pet expo so that little dog was up for adoption that afternoon so if Aww. you want to go check that out this year then <laughs> okay. you can find yourself a nice little or big dog whatever your preference is <laughs> okay great wait who was so sorry i didn't want to mean to cut somebody off did somebody oh, say no. something oh. um just question a little that we don't like to have oh yes 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 oh, thank you. question that we don't like to have what were you saying off well, screen? Your year, I heard that there was the zodiac question. Oh my right? god! Oh, <laughs> that was like a they just threw it, threw that out there just to like, like throw us off a little bit. Like what? Um, it was well, we were in a Chinese cultural pageant, okay. so they were like, "Can you name the twelve? What? It was like a test question. Uh, <laughs> in order, order. Um, and or a quiz. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Um, <laughs> um. I was like, I'm a monkey, and my brother is a year younger than me. He's a rooster, so I was kind of trying to go in order <laughs> based on people I knew. Right, right. <laughs> but I mean, I heard you guys explain that the judges didn't really care if you knew all of the zodiac animals. Uh -huh. But so what, how what were they looking for? They mm. wanted to see how we would um, react because it was such an off question. Okay. So how would you like hold yourself in that in that? Uh, question under pressure. You right. Yeah. Okay. You guys should be allowed, you know what I think you should, next time they have pageant, the con contestants should be allowed to ask the judges a question. You can. You, you really? absolutely yeah. can. I mean, you Has might anybody not always get an, I, I mean, it, it's just like this. It's a conversation with the group of people in front of you because they're trying to get to know you and right. you have done like preliminary research. You've definitely <laughs> Googled them at least three times. Oh, oh really? <laughs> so you need to know where they're coming from. Ah, right, good right. Point. So, okay. I mean, by that point, there's entry level knowledge on both ends. Good. Mm -hmm. okay. And so, I mean, you you can. You might not get a lengthy response, but yeah. it is a conversation first and foremost. Going back to the pre, when we just started the show about the whole preconceptions of beauty pageants, when guys approach you because you have this title, do you, do they have certain ex expectations or misconceptions of what you know you're supposed to be like? Well, we can take a lot of photos with people. Right. There must be a lot of dirty old men who kind of <laughs> love to. Oh, okay. okay. There's, 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 there's some tricks times. for that. So, oh, oh, okay. Let's so get tricks. Somebody's like, hey, yes. hey okay. and then oh, they'll like come and they'll like. They yeah. put the hand on your your, uh -huh. your lower then, hip, then, right? But then they uh -huh. they sometimes they, they, they go <laughs> lower and then yeah. they just go <laughs> and it's on your you, you, on so your butt. Yeah. So you move it up. Yeah. Yeah. You just okay. You know. Yeah. And they get the hint. But it's, mm -hmm. it's really difficult because a lot of times those are people who have a lot of influence or power and so mm -hmm. you might not necessarily uh. be in a position where you feel comfortable like publicly saying, please move your hand. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really, it makes me really sad to think about the fact that I can't publicly express that 
like concern over my own body and so it's something right. that I, I get upset about and so if I see a girl who's being um, so you just concerned. for lack of a better word attacked by, <laughs> by one of uh -huh. these people then I'll like come in and I'll move the hand oh, as I, and I'll be so like oh here thing, right? let's take all of the yeah. picture together well, you know just help each other out that's right? yeah. great yeah but what about boyfriend situations have you has that affected or just you know social life you get the dirty old men who always want to do that and they will always be dirty hate to say i mean you know my dad's a dirty old man i sometimes see him like talk breaking out dirty jokes guys are always guys and because again you guys on 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 stage um with a beauty image how do you educate the men to respect women i know that sounds like one of those pageant questions <laughs> cringy but can you just you know what are your suggestions on how to remove that type of uh, perspective. I was a minor being like publicly broadcast on state television in a swimsuit. And so that like was- Like that photo, exactly, right? Exactly like that. And I was 17 when I, um, when I did that. And so it was really nerve wracking for me because I knew that I was gonna have a lot of people watching the pageant as there are every year. And I think that I just make it very public that my body is mine and I know that people are going to be looking at it however way they want to but that like photo that act of walking across the stage in a swimsuit is my personal act of empowerment mm -hmm. and taking ownership of that mm -hmm. kind of removes whatever negativity other people might give to me whether that's um, scrutiny for being 17 years old and walking across the stage in a swimsuit which I am still trying to get over <laughs> <laughs> or, or it be people who are looking at me um, for dirty reasons right and you're gonna get that throughout life right you know being an attractive girl and confident mm -hmm. it just draws attention because the world is like that women are the spectacle and the men are the spectators now we're, we have just a little bit of time left if you can share anything you want to say to maybe men out there about the perception of beauty pageant or the concept of beauty please uh, this is your moment I mean I think ultimately understand that we are people you know we mm -hmm. we are still learning about ourselves and we are not just um, you know items for you to just look at and grab and you know we're, we're human and we're here trying to learn trying to help the community do our community service um stand up for young children you know to raise uh, to advocate for respect and if uh, we can't even get respect ourselves like how do we how do you guys expect us to help the youth you know right mm -hmm. right <laughs> yeah just going off of staff i i agree you know um yeah, you know, help us out. We're, we're trying to make a, a, a difference in the world and our, in our community. So, yeah, you know, I think um, just helping us, uh, helping us to empower ourselves as well as empower um, others around us as well. So. I know that not all of you are are bad guys, and as much as we, <laughs> we talk about I know, it, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I know, but but you know bad. what? Peer pressure is such a big part of why men act the way that they do, because there is an expectation for them, just like there is for us, to say the certain things and to act a certain way when they're with their friends. And I think that if people felt comfortable standing up for themselves, um, whether it's a man or a woman, in a setting with which they're not comfortable, then that would create a mutual sense of respect for all parties involved and whatever it be. So I mean, if you hear a buddy talking about a woman who is um, wearing a short skirt, then you know what? Feel, you know, that's her body. She can do what she wants exactly. with it. Mm -hmm. Someone once told me you that. You own it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Someone once told me that people can't be equal in the workplace until they can be equal in the home. So oh, I think that good. that's a really good first step as to how we can right. all work together to create that mutual sense of respect. You hear that, guys? I mean, m ladies and gentlemen, that, that is, this is the, I think you guys have the essence of what it is to be beautiful. 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 <laughs> um, inside and out, nature of Hawaii, bringing the best of everyone out. So thank you so much for your reflective and gorgeously confident uh, conversations today. Uh, remember to check us out. If you missed this one, go on to YouTube. Um, this is... Uh, Quok Talk on ThinkTech. Thank you again, ladies. And thank you, uh, thank you for, for joining so us today.